Hello, Penguinauts! I'm the Baby Penguin, and welcome back to Endurance. Sorry, it's been a little while since the last episode, but I was actually in Orlando, Florida on holiday. It was actually the first time I've ever been to the United States of America. Well, I'd already been when I was two, but I obviously don't remember that. Uh, but it was a pretty awesome trip, but that's why... Well, actually, you had more regular uploads while I was in the US because I worked really hard to pre-upload a bunch of stuff. Since I've been back, less so because uh, I've had a lot of stuff to do and I actually have A-level results tomorrow. So if you don't get any videos for a week, it's because I'm crying. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> moving on to what we're doing today. So of course, last episode, Reclaimer arrived at Demise. We have pretty much run out of fuel, but we're still going to land on the surface and bring the lander back up, take all of the data uh, that we need, and of course plant the flag on the surface, fulfill a bunch of contracts, get some money, and then while we're waiting for our resupply mission, we'll of course work our way through all of the data that we retrieve from the surface, researching it in that mobile processing lab that you see there. However, uh, I was trying to bring our orbit down uh, as much as possible so that our lander uh, would have the shortest trip possible to the surface but yeah we actually ran out of fuel in the main spacecraft before we could uh, bring it down quite as much as I wanted to but it should be fine we've got about 500 meters per second of leeway in this lander when it comes to delta v uh, so it is a little narrow but we should be absolutely fine so what we're going to do is we're going to try and bring ourselves down here uh, the original plan was to bring ourselves down on the border between the two biomes uh, two land biomes which are the hot surface and sweltering peaks because I thought that the Lava Lakes biome was only in the Lava Lakes themselves because there are three biomes on Nem uh, not Nemesis on Demise that we need to explore. However, it turns out that the Lava Lakes biome is actually the land around the Lava Lakes as well. Um, and I also just completely messed up my descent uh, as well because I didn't know just where we land because you need to start burning so early when you're landing on Demise. It has 0.9 G's of gravity. Uh, I believe I said it was 0.8 G's last episode. No, it's 0.9 G's. So this is harder to land on than Tylo. Yeah, 0.9 G's of gravity, which is actually stronger gravity than back on Solitude. So the Kerbals are going to feel like there's lead in their boots when they land. Uh, and also no atmosphere to slow you down. So you need to time this perfectly. If you start slowing down too early, you're going to have a coast down to the surface using a lot of fuel um, and it's basically just going to be a massive waste of fuel and you won't have enough delta v to get back up into space however if you start burning too late then you're going to smash into the surface but thankfully after i'll admit uh, three attempts we managed to touch down almost perfectly with plenty of delta v to get us back up into orbit afterwards so we drop the ladder and we step outside for whatever reason we are slowly sliding down the hill at 0.2 meters per second but hopefully if we get to a little shallow a bit that will <laughs> arrest itself apparently there's much grip on these heavy landing legs and our other landing legs aren't quite touching the ground they were just to stop us tipping over when we did eventually land so first things first holy crap okay so we've performed a crew transfer near demise a rendezvous maneuver around demise started constructing a first station around demise i guess that was that was docking the um yeah that must have just been docking the lander and the uh and the main ship. Okay, docking, yeah, docking testament and reclaimer. Holy, <laughs> plus 80% milestone rewards from uh, Demise program. That's certainly paying off. Performed a docking maneuver on Demise. Okay, not not last time I checked, but all right, okay. Entered into suborbital space flight around Demise and we have landed on the surface of Demise. Um, oh wow, we just made two million funds. <laughs> oh, hello, the sun's going down. Look at that. That's pretty striking, isn't it? Gorgeous. It would be even better if we weren't slowly drifting down the hill. Uh, I'm not sure what I can really do about that. Maybe retract this landing leg? I think these can support its weight. It's going to look a little weird, a little lopsided. But if it stops us moving... Yeah, okay, that worked. Boom! I think those landing legs should be alright. Let's uh, make a quick save right now. Uh, now that we've just got a ridiculous amount of money, and have a look at all the science. As you look outside the window, you question if it is safe. The boys at the lab reassure you it's totally safe and you can handle a little heat. We'll keep that. Temperature scan. The thermometer seems to have burned off its mount or possibly exploded. Uh, yeah, this close to the sun, not hard to believe. It's probably a good thing that we're now... 
uh, heading into the night side. So I think the surface might actually be too hot for Kerbals to step foot on. I didn't realize Lava Lakes was actually a biome uh, that we can land in. I thought that was the actual lakes of lava, but just nearby to the Lava Lakes actually counts as the same biome. So that's pretty sweet. Even the barometer says it's hot. <laughs> Mystery Goo Observation. The goo has become a gas. It doesn't seem to be enjoying its new form. Seismic scan. No need for a scanner. You can feel the earthquakes yourself. Yeah, I guess the planet would be pretty unstable at this point, wouldn't it? Yeah. Gravity scan. Gravity scan data acquired. Ah, lame. We don't have reports for all of them. Look at the amount of science we're getting from this. Holy crap. Most of the samples have been liquefied. Analyze atmospheric condition. Faint traces of purple can still be found here. What experiment was that? Was that that one? Yeah, it was. Gas chromatograph mass spectrometer. That's a fancy name, isn't it? Okay, I think it is uh, long overdue that we extend the ladder. It is um, slightly offset from the fuel tanks. It's just it's all a bit of a topsy turvy spacecraft because we had to have um, asparagus staging to actually have enough delta v to actually be able to manage it. But uh, there we go. Extend the ladder down to the surface. Let's hope that the ladder's long enough. We've got 0.9 g's here, so the uh, yeah, that's fine. The EVA pack is not going to have much of an effect at all. So, yeah. Uh, and that's why we're not going to have to, no, we're not going to be able to, first of all, to go and grab the data out of these experiments. And that's why we have this container to collect all the data out of them. I believe that's taken. Yeah, it has. Um, I don't think we need to reset anything either because we've got two of everything. Uh, and again, I do want to have two of every experiment so we can put one lot of them through the lab and take the other uh, bunch of them home with us. Anyway, I believe uh, Ted. Ted needs to be the one to get out and set foot on the surface first, methinks. Oh, hello, grab that, Ted. <laughs> Don't be too eager to get down to the surface, okay? Okay, that's it. EVA report? What do you mean Amazon doesn't deliver to my location? Nah. Apparently we can take a surface sample from here. You drop to your knees and cry. This planet has fallen so far. You know what, we're gonna... We're going to uh, do that. And climb back in. Oh! Oh! Okay, because uh, I'm not sure the surface is actually safe to set foot on. I need to plant a flag on it. So, okay, it looks like we're touching the surface whether we like it or not. And, okay, it is safe. <laughs> I think if we were in full daylight, um, it would actually start melting the Kerbal. But as it stands, Ted seems to be okay. If he starts overheating, check that. Oh, hello. No, no, yeah, he is. he is very warm right now, but he's not boiling alive. I think if we got any closer to the lava, or we were on the daytime side, we might have some trouble. But uh, as it stands, we are actually okay. So, let's plant ourselves a flag. Which is not a very good place to plant a flag, really, is it? Not great for the uh, thumbnail, but whatever. Um, blah, blah. Actually, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll take it down. We'll take it down. Take it down. And we'll, we'll put it in a slightly better place. So we can have it in a beautiful thumbnail. Plant flag. There we go, Ted. Glorious. Plant that damn flag. Testament. Lava lakes. My boots are melting. There we go. Check it out. And let's turn off the UI and get ourselves a beautiful thumbnail. Ah, oh, look at that. Glorious. I might not even have Testament in the thumbnail. I might just have um, Ted and the flag, because that's a beautiful shot. Just of the sun rising there. Well, setting, actually. Uh, from <laughs> where it is at the moment. I just want to take another surface sample to read more of the... Uh, that's not going to be the only... Oh, here we go. The drill starts to melt and the rock comes out as gel. Very interesting. I just want to read more of the reports because they're funny. Uh, okay, so let's swap back to the lander for a second. And then let's put all of the experiments in here. Collect all. Okay, cool. And now we can take another surface sample and another EVA report with Ted. So we take EVA report. You see the vintage partially liquid rock and max decoupler stuck in the ground on the Kerbium plated plaque. It says Danny2462 was here. Fascinating. It is fascinating indeed. Take another surface sample. Your glove catches fire as soon as you touch the ground. <laughs> uh, appropriate, because we are, you know, in the lava lakes right now. So, yeah. Right, let's climb back up. Uh, get back in this spacecraft where it is safe. Because it's certainly not safe on the surface here. Uh, I'm hoping we can climb back into the spacecraft without too much trouble. Sometimes the edges of these salamander pods can give you a bit of trouble. 
Come on. Yeah, climb up over the edge. Come on, Ted. Ah, there we go. Bit of a pain, but we did it. We did it. In you get. And beautiful. Right. Uh, and then what we're going to do is... Can we transfer the data to the pod? Uh, no, we cannot. Okay. Let's not do that then. Uh, let's grab all of these experiments again. So log the seismic data. No need for a scan for the earthquakes yourself. Yeah, we've already had that one. Uh, we did the seismic. Yeah, we did that. Log pressure data. Even the bronze says it's hot. We had that one. Gravity data. There aren't any, there aren't any ones for that. It's kind of sad. The monster is melted. Oh, no. Uh, we'll take another crew report as well. As you look outside the window, you question if it's safe. Yep, we had that one as well. I swear there are more, but we're not getting quite as lucky with them, um, with the reports, so we're getting the same ones multiple times. Observe materials bay, there we go, and observe the mystery goo. The goo is glued to the top of the container while gently quivering. You can sell the goo and promise that you won't spend much time here. That's true, uh, mainly just because the longer we spend time here, the further we're going to get away from uh, Reclaimer's orbit. I think we'll probably stay here. If it doesn't get too hot, we'll stay here for an entire day, uh, so we get directly underneath it, because we don't have any fuel on Reclaimer anymore, so we have to, using the fuel in this lander, be able to get back up to it. So, mm. uh, we have a lot of RCS, so as, as long as we're in orbit, we should be fine. Uh, I probably put too much RCS on this thing, if anything. But, uh, yeah, anyway, Peter, I want you to get out. Hello, just grab that, there we go. And then I need to take the data from that. Uh, install the experiments there. Oh, install those experiments there. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, cool. And then collect all. Right, and then we should have taken them out of the experiments. Right, yeah, we've got 10 experiments in here and 10 in there. Right, so we've got one set of uh, experiments stored in the probe core here. And then we've got another set stored in there. And that is all of the experiments that we can do on the surface of Demise. We've planted our flag, and now, as long as it doesn't get too hot, um, which it may well do, we're going to try and stay here for a day, and then, as soon as we're lined up perfectly with the orbit of Reclaimer, we're going to get the hell off the surface of this planet, because it's uh, it's not a stable place to be. We've visited it now, time to go. Um, yeah, I think I might put a bit more wiggle room when it comes to Delta V in the next lander that I send. I think I will send a second lander, possibly with a rover, you know, a bigger one, uh, with the resupply mission that we're going to have to send out here. Um, you know, make a bit of a mobile bo base of operations, that sort of thing. Um, that might be a good idea. I don't know. We could actually possibly refuel on the surface, because if we do have data for it since we launched that satellite, don't we? Um, let's show. Can we see any ore? Um, I just want... Normal ore. I don't know how to, uh, how to put that here. <laughs> I can't see anything. We have to actually select. Okay, we've got alumina, dirt, exotic materials, metal ore. There we go. I have no idea which one of these is the actual, is the ore ore that you can convert in the ISRU. I think having interstellar and stuff installed makes it slightly more complicated. Um, so to make fuel, we might need a few more resources. Um, but yeah, we already did a scan of the surface. I don't know. I'll look into it um, as to whether we can actually make fuel on the surface. Because that would be, that'd be a nice safety net to have to be able to do that. But then I had saying that all the drilling equipment might just be a really dumb idea, actually. I don't know. I shall see, but I'm definitely going to build a bigger lander next time. Uh, this one, yeah, we're cutting it a bit fine. So what I actually eventually decide to do here is not wait all the way through the daytime and just wait until we're underneath Reclaimer's orbit once again, and then we'll just launch in a different direction to make sure that we are actually orbiting around the planet in the same direction that Reclaimer is orbiting. Because, yeah, I don't really want to stay on the surface during daytime. I think the surface temperatures on Demise will actually melt our spacecraft. So, 
Uh, yeah, we're not going to risk that, especially considering we are so close to uh, the lava lakes here. In this biome, yeah, it's not worth risking. Maybe in some of the higher up biomes, like the sweltering peaks, uh, we might be able to risk it. But uh, yeah, we might as well just take off and head back up to reclaim it. There's no real benefit to us staying on the surface of a planet that is quite literally hell. Well, maybe not quite as close to hell as the wasteland, but uh, yeah. You know, it, it's close enough. <laughs> Maybe I should actually talk about my trip to Florida while we're just doing our little rendezvous maneuver here. Um, it was actually really, really good. Like, it was amazing. Um, the reason why I'd never been before is just because it's so expensive. It's unbelievably <laughs> expensive to go to Florida uh, from the UK. And, of course, a nine-hour flight doesn't help either. Um, but the reason I wanted to go is because I recently turned 18, and it's, like, one of my lifelong things on my bucket list was to go to the Kennedy Space Center and it was awesome. We got a multi-day pass so we spent uh, two days there and I actually met an astronaut. I met Ed Gibson who was on one of the Skylab missions and something I talked about in previous episodes of Endurance actually is that there was supposedly a mutiny on board one of the Skylab missions. So I thought well there's actually a lot of sort of mismatching stories around it you know a lot of people inflating the truth whatever and you can't really seem to find out whether there actually was a mutiny or not so i thought who better to ask than the person who was actually on the mission himself ed gibson um so he was doing a sort of question and answer session at the end of the uh, at the end of the lunch because it was sort of a lunch with an astronaut sort of thing um which is really really nicely done um and i was actually the last question and i said to him i said is it true that there was a mutiny on one of the skylab missions and he laughed and i will never forget what he said he, he has a great sense of humor he said i believe the uh, the term is fake news uh, <laughs> so uh, he, what a guy um, but yeah so then he went on to explain about it you know how in that day, NASA really hadn't got down, you know, organizing astronauts' time in space, and they were trying to micromanage them down to five-minute intervals, which in practice just doesn't work. And there were three of them up there, and what they tried to do was have it so that one of them was always speaking to Mission Control, and the other two were doing work, but then accidentally nobody was actually listening to Mission Control, and they had mutiny, mutineer thrown at them, but really nothing actually happened. But anyway, we now have Testament back docked to Reclaimer. We do actually level up all of the crew on board, so uh, we now have two level three scientists and of course Ted is now a level three pilot which is very very nice and we have a pretty awesome hall of science here so we've almost finished that whole uh, line of tech there which is pretty sweet and once we get onto the next tier of tech nodes uh, we can actually get some pretty awesome stuff including RTGs and a lot of nuclear um, powered engines. We have a lot of nuclear power at the moment so we've researched all of the uh, nuclear power plants and stuff and reactors but uh, we haven't actually got any propulsion systems yet besides the basic nuclear engine. However you're probably wondering what we're doing here. Well after repeated observations of our nearby star Valentine, our scientists have decided that it can actually finally make a direct observation of one of its planets and certainly we have discovered what is called a hot Jupiter. These are actually the most abundant planets in the universe, a large gas giant very close into the star so they orbit very quickly and of course since they're so massive they create quite a large dip in brightness and as such we can get a pretty good impression of what this planet looks like. Our scientists have named it Heba, and it shall be the first stop when we do eventually, hopefully, travel to the Valentine system in future. But that is the end of the episode. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. I've been the Beardy Penguin, and I'll see you all next time.